Hello and welcome to the Myriad Anywhere Schedule Add-on Training video. In this video, we'll be covering the basics of using Myriad Anywhere Schedule to both set up and run the scheduling for your station. We are assuming some prior knowledge on music scheduling in general, and some prior knowledge of Myriad Schedule would also be useful. However, we will be going through all the steps needed to set up and run your schedule. So if you're new to music scheduling and new to Myriad Schedule, then you can still use this video to get everything you need to get the basics going for your station. If you need more detailed information, we have both written documentation and tutorial videos for Myriad Schedule, which go into a lot more detail about the basic concepts of scheduling and how they're applied within the Myriad Schedule ecosystem. Okay, let's get started. Head on over to your Myriad Anywhere portal and log in as normal. Once the launch pad is visible, click on the schedule button. Before we get started on the details, why don't we have a quick look around the system to give you some basic orientation about how to navigate and find the content that you want. Starting on the left hand side, we have the navigation panel, which is used for accessing all the tools and features inside Myriad Anywhere Schedule. So this divided up into different sections. So you can see the media section is used for managing songs, links and adverts. And you can use this for adding content viewing the decks, adding adverts, also browsing the content via the media grid or the library. There's also access to the media import wizard, which allows you to mass import content. The next section is the clocks and rules section, which allows you to edit the clocks and assign them to hours and also to edit the station rule sets that you are using. The schedule log section allows you to view any previously scheduled log, plus you can also schedule and unschedule the content for your station. There are also some reports about um, log hour information, which tells you which hours of the week you have already scheduled. And you can also view schedule log warnings, which will give you any warnings about issues with your scheduling. Finally, we have the play logs, which allows you to access the play logs for your station and also copyright reports. You'll also see there's a player on the bottom of the navigation panel, which is used for previewing content. With Myriad Anywhere Schedule, when you open content, it will normally open in the main working area as a tab. So you can see when I've clicked on a song deck, it's open there. If I was to open the uh, edit clocks window, you can see it's a separate tab. Uh, this is different to the desktop application, which would open floating windows. And this is a limitation of working within a, a browser environment. So in Myriad Anywhere Schedule, you have um, each one of these windows you opens, opens another tab on the system. There are a few exceptions, things like the add song window opens a smaller floating window. As you can see, everything behind is grayed out until you close this window. Finally, the Myriad Anywhere drop down menu allows you access to the options section, which you can set uh, the different options available inside Myriad Anywhere and Myriad Anywhere schedule. And you can also get back to the launch pad or change station from in here. And indeed you can also change password and log out from inside of this menu. So that's it for basic orientation. Let's look at a few of the options in a bit more detail now. Let's start off by adding some new content to the system. Adding a new song, link or advert is largely the same process. So we'll just cover it on adding songs, but we will look at the differences for a couple of the other ones like an advert. And to add a new song, the first thing you need to do is in the media section, click on add song. This opens up the import window, which we saw briefly in the previous orientation video. And this allows you to browse to the media item you want to upload, as well as set the type and the categories, etc. So the first thing you need to do is click on the browse button to select the media files that you want to upload. While the file is being uploaded, you can also set the metadata if you wish to. You can see the title and artist and description say determined by Myriad. This means that Myriad will extract the information from the metadata inside the file, but you can type in here if you prefer to overwrite. Also, you can see you set the, uh, the item type because we chose add song, it's pre-selected to add song. 
If you have a your system set up to do individual um, categorizations per station, you have a select station section here, which allows you to choose which station or set the categorizations on a per station basis. For most stations, you probably won't have this configured, so the select station won't be visible and you'll go straight to the categorization section. In here, you can drop down the primary and the secondary category. So if I want to add this song to my pop as primary and maybe I'll add it to my gold as secondary. If your station is configured to have Myriad Schedule Plus, you will also have access to any configured types, genders or eras and you can use the drop down to choose those as appropriate. And finally, uh, whether you have Schedule or Schedule Plus, you have access to tags which allow you to tag uh, tick any of the appropriate tags and you can tick as many of these as you wish. And before we click on save and import, um, there are obviously additional fields inside of the Myriad edit window, uh, which we don't have access as part to as part of this import process. So what we're going to do is tick on the open media editor uh, after importing uh, option. And what this will do is once I click on save and import, it'll import the system in, but then also open up the edit window so we can complete configuring the rest of the data for this song. Okay, that can take a few seconds to do depending on how fast your internet speed is at both sites, i.e. your um, remote site and at the station. Um, so once uh, once it's uh, finished uploading, confirmed, you then open up it then opens up the edit window. As you can see, the title and artist information has been pre-configured as it's the type, and um, but you can set now the ending type if you wish. So whether it's an end song or a fade song, um, you can also uh, adjust the uh, the uh, intro, extra and hook times if you wish to. So I just clicked on load preview. As you can see, it's downloading a low quality preview so we can listen to it and set this timing. Once it's downloaded once, the next time we open this one, it will be in our local cache so it won't uh, have to download it um, in future unless anyone else edits the audio. As you can see, we haven't got an intro or an extra set on this, so let's set one right now. Now you probably can't hear the audio in a video here for copyright reasons, but it will be playing you the intro and you click on intro end where you want to set the intro end. You set the hook in exactly the same way. You'll notice that the extra is automatically set by the system, although you can listen to it and adjust that if required. Moving on to the categories tab, you can see that in here we've got the, the information that we set as part of our import process. The restrictions tab allows you to set a uh, the hours when this item can and can't be scheduled. So let's say we didn't want this item to be scheduled uh, on a Tuesday for some reason. Um, we can literally uh, just select all the hours on Tuesday and if they're red, then the system won't schedule this item on those hours. If it's green, the system could schedule this item in those hours. We also have a tick option here for allow Myriad Schedule to use this item. Now this is very important because if this tick isn't ticked, then it doesn't matter what else we've done, this song will not enter rotation using Myriad Schedule. Now the, the options uh, for whether this is set on or off by default are part of your main Myriad um, setup. So it will be saying this once you've set it for your station, all content will be the same. But I think the default is for items that you add to not automatically be in schedule so that things don't go into the rotation unexpectedly. Uh, so you have to tick that if you want this item to be in rotation. You can also set a start date and an end date. Now this isn't usually used for songs, but if you're adding links uh, or adverts, then that becomes a, a very important thing because you can set the um, start and end date for those items. And you can also set a delete date as well, after which the system, if configured to do so, will automatically delete it from the system. You can move on to the rights tab, which allows you to put in the copyright information for this item. And finally, on the other tab, you have uh, fields such as album, year of release, out queue, and some custom fields which may be different for each individual station. There are a couple of other options on the top here as well. You can view the schedule history and the edit history. Obviously, there will be none for this song that we've just uploaded, but if you are viewing uh, a song that's already been on the system for a while, you can view the schedule history and the edit history for those items. Uh, 
you can also set the start and end. You'll view those if you want to. And this is if you need to trim silence from the beginning or end of the track, you can do so. You can set custom colors. These are the colors that are displayed on the media wall and you can export it, save it and delete it depending on what you want to do. Um, so I'm just going to click on save. Uh, what I'm going to do now is just show you the differences between a, that, a song, a link and an advert. So we'll move on to a link next. OK, so here we have a link and it is virtually identical to a song. The only major difference really is this play as sweeper tick box, which allows you to um, determine whether this so this link should be treated as a sweeper, i.e. will be automatically embedded into the intro of the following song in uh, automated or live assisted shows. Other than that, the rest of the settings are very similar. So you can set your categories and your tags. Uh, you can set your restrictions, as we mentioned before, the start and end date and restrictions are for probably more useful on links than they are on songs. Uh, you have a copyright information and your other tab. Uh, things are a little bit different when we look at adverts. So let's take a look at an advert. So here we have an advert. As you can see, the editor and the categories uh, tabs are the same as they were for songs and links, with the exception of we have um, where we had tags for songs and links. We have a collision tags for adverts. Now these work in a similar way to tags, except for the collisions. Uh, the collision tags are used in adverts um, to allow you to set uh, adverts of a similar type. So, for example, this is a uh, advert for. Um, makeup or something like that. Uh, so let's say it was a shopping style advert. If we tick the shopping collision for all of the adverts um, that are uh, retail based, then um, when the system schedules these adverts, it will try and keep them in separate breaks or at least as apart from each other inside the um, standard advert break. Uh, this collision tags incidentally can also be set when you upload adverts to the system using the add advert, which we were looking at earlier. Um, to the right of that, we also have uh, the ability to change this from a soft collision to a hard collision. The difference between a soft and a hard collision is a soft collision, the system will try and keep retail or shopping adverts apart from each other. But if it has to play two back to back, it will. If, however, we change this to be a hard collision, the system will simply not allow the two hard colliding adverts to play back to back and would rather drop an advert rather than play them back to back. When we move on to the adverts tab, which replaces the restrictions tab on songs and links, here we can see where we had a restrictions grid before. We now have a thing called requested plays. Now, the way this works is you've got two different ways you can um, request plays for an advert. So this advert at the moment is being played, requested to be played once an hour on a Monday at midnight and again at 2 a.m., but not at all at, at the 1 a.m. hour. So let's see if we wanted to say play this twice in the 1 a.m. hour, we could just simply put a 2 in there. And now this advert will play uh, once at midnight, or between midnight and 1 o'clock, twice between 1 o'clock and 2 o'clock, and then um, once again between 2 and 3. And obviously you would need to do that uh, for each day of the week that you wanted to do so. So that's the kind of the simplest thing, which is to set up um, just how many times an hour this advert should be played. But we also have a thing called band scheduling, which allows you to say how many times an advert should be played or scheduled to be played within a band of time. So this is really useful because let's say your breakfast show runs from seven to nine every day. So here's the, the block here for our seven to nine. So let's create that as a band A. Um, and you can have band A, band B, band C and band D. And then in band A, I'm going to set the plays to be twice. OK, so what this means is this advert between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m., this advert will be played twice, but it might be played twice in the 7 a.m. hour, not at all in the 8 a.m. hour, or it might be vice versa, played all in the 8 a.m. hour or would more likely be spread out across the two playing once in each one of those hours. But if you had a much longer band, so let's say that um, our drive time was to go from um, uh, three o'clock in the afternoon through till seven o'clock in the evening, and we call this one band B. And in band B, I'm saying, actually, again, I only want to play it twice 
in an hour in band B. Now, what this means is this advert will be played twice somewhere between three o'clock in the afternoon and the end of the six o'clock hour, i.e. seven o'clock in the evening. So this allows you to say to sell your advertising in such a way that you can say, OK, well, we're going to you know, we're going to play you once an hour, twice an hour and some hours. But in prime time, breakfast, drive time shows, lunchtime shows, that type of thing, you could actually say, well, we're going to play you three times within that five hour show. And uh, it just allows you uh, flexibility in how you uh, position your adverts and sell your advertising. Uh, we mentioned start and end date, which is really important for adverts because obviously if someone's only paying you to play their advert until the uh, 7th of uh, February 2020, you certainly do not want to be playing after that. So you would simply set your uh, end date to the, the last day of your contract and then the system will stop scheduling that advert um, on that date. We have a new option in here called use tail media. If we do that, we can then select the uh, media item we want to play as the tail. And what will happen is this, whenever this this advert is scheduled to play, it will always be scheduled to play at the, as the first item in the advert break. And then the very last item in the advert break it will play whichever media item you have in the use tail media item. So this is useful for selling premium adverts where you can guarantee their advert will be played first in the break and then at the end of the break there'll be a, a, a secondary advert which you'd have to create which would be uh, either a reminder or um, some other uh, reference back to the advert break so it allows you to to create premium positions within each advert break now obviously you can only have as many top and tail adverts as you have advert breaks because you can't have two adverts playing first in any one advert break Finally, you can say whether adverts can be scheduled by um, the same, uh, allow this advert to be scheduled by, um, a, a, along with other adverts by the same advertiser in a break. So in this case, um, Brian Firkin is the advertiser here. So um, if, if he has two adverts running, do we allow both those adverts to be in one break? And also you can choose whether or not to allow this advert to be played more than in one more than once in a single break if required. So typically you may allow adverts from the same advertiser to be in the same break, but probably not the same advert. But if you want this advert to be in very high rotation, then you may be forced to allow that to happen in order to, to meet your requirements. Other than that, the rights and the other tabs are the same as they were before. And so um, setting up adverts is, is very similar to uh, Songs and Links with the exception of the advert tab where you um, you uh, set all of the criteria for this advert. And of course, if you want to remove it from scheduling, you can do so. As we've already seen, you can use AdSong, AdLink or Ad Adverts to upload individual songs, links and adverts. But what if you've got lots of adverts, songs or links that you want to upload in one go? Well, you can use the Media Import Wizard to upload several items at once into a particular item type and category. Let's take a look. Click on the Import, the Media Import Wizard in the Media section to open the Media Import Wizard. Um, first thing to do is choose the item type you want to upload. So let's say we want to add a few songs. Click on songs. And we can also set a category if we wish. So I'm going to put these all into my um, pop category. So the next thing I need to do is uh, to select the songs I want to upload. And you can either drag them onto this area here, or if you click on it, you can browse to the folder to choose. So let's say we want to upload uh, three songs. Click on open. As you can see, they've been added into the system there. The other thing it will do is automatically assign a media ID based on a type. So we're uploading, uploading these as songs. So the system will select some empty uh, media item or media IDs in the song region. Now, if I want to specifically set the media ID to start from, I could do so uh, by clicking import into media item sequentially starting from. So if I wanted to, I could say start this from uh, 11,000 and the first item list would go in at 11,000 and the next one would go into 11,001 and then 11,002, unless there was something already in those items, in which case it would go to the next next empty meter ID starting from the number you've given it. But 
For this, I'm just going to choose back to go back to automatically choose meter IDs and click on the start button. As you can see, the meter IDs have been assigned here and the items are being uploaded uh, from our system to uh, the Myriad system at your station. Now this will probably take a few moments depending on the, uh, the speed of your connection, the speed of the connection at the station and the size of the files that you're uploading. Once the upload is complete, you can see the title and artist information displayed and green ticks confirming that the items have been successfully uploaded to your Myriad system or Cloud Playout system. Once you're finished, click on close. If you want to browse or search the content that's already on your system, there are a couple of different approaches you could use depending on how you want to view the content and what content you're looking for. The simplest way to view things is to use the media library, which is available on the, in the media section. The media library allows you to browse by category. So you can see you have uh, sections for songs, links and adverts and other types that you may have um, within your system. So let's say we're looking at uh, the pop song category and here you can see we'll have a list of all the songs in that category and you can um, change the order by clicking on uh, the col column headers to, to, to list them alphabetically or numerically. You can also go into a type if you have schedule plus. So you have types, genders and areas available. So you can go in uh, to types uh, that way and you can also uh, expand genders, types and areas if you have mirror schedule plus. Uh, similarly, you can also view things by tags as well. So um, using this allows you to, to browse the content, um, either songs, links or jingles via category. You can also search in here. So if you're looking for all the songs by a particular artist, this is the easiest way to find that content. Now, if you wanted to edit one of these songs, you can click on them and click on the edit button and that will open up the edit window for that song, which we looked at in more detail in the previous section. You can also upload or download content. So if I wanted to download a song uh, for local editing, I can uh, click on the export in original format and it will download uh, the, full, uh, the full quality version of that item to, uh, to, to my uh, downloads area on my local browser. And if I wanted to upload content, I can also do the same thing. Click on the upload button. And I can either choose to import a song, a link, an advert, or use the import wizard. Um, and these will, this will open one of the methods we covered in the previous section, either um, upload a, a, an individual song, or if you open the import wizard, allows you to upload uh, multiple items to be songs, links, jingles, um, adverts, etc. Another way of viewing the content on your system is to view the media grid. This will, uh, this will be familiar for anyone who's used Mirrored in a studio. This allows you to basically view the content of your media wall. Um, and this is organized by media ID number rather than category. So whereas uh, in the library, everything was viewed via categories and it's very easy to see um, everything inside of one category, the media wall is better for viewing um, all content together. So if I go to the link section, for example, I can use this to just scroll along the media wall and see all of my uh, all of the items on my uh, media wall. You can similarly to before, you can highlight an item and click on edit, or you can um, import content if you have the appropriate access rights to do so. When dealing with adverts, things are a little bit different because we have a, a, a dedicated feature called advert management. And what this allows you to do is view the adverts that are currently enabled on your system for scheduling. So if I was to look uh, for today and click on search, this will give me a list of all the adverts that are currently being scheduled today. And I can drop down the date range and look for future adverts, older adverts, a custom range, or even inactive adverts. And this just gives me an easy way of seeing which adverts are currently um, on the system. And as before, you can um, you can highlight them. You can actually double click on it and it'll open up the, the edit window for that advert. You can also search your adverts um, by category. 
um, you can uh, search by title and advertiser from within this window. Whether you're using the media library, the advert management or the media grid, you can drag content into the player to review at any time. In the last section, we saw how you could browse or search your content using the media library or grid views, but we also have the song category decks and also the link category decks, which allow you to view the actual category decks for each song or link category. Uh, this also allows you to view the order the deck is in. You can also manually apply a shuffle to a deck. And if you have schedule plus, you can automatically apply kicks and shuffles. There are a few other tools that you can use, for example, dragging content from one deck to another to easily change the categorization of content. So let's take a look. To open a song category deck, click on the song category deck option under media. Next, choose the category you want to work with. Here you can see the content inside this category. By default, it's listed by alphabet, so you can see it's listed alphabetically. However, if you click on the sort uh, show in deck order, this will show you the, um, the order the deck is currently in. So basically that means that the next rock category song to be scheduled is head held high, um, as long as doing so doesn't break any of the rules or guides that you have set in place. We can also see we have the position in the deck and uh, also the current test. The current test is how many times that item has been tested and not been scheduled um, in its current position. So uh, it's currently head held high is it currently the top of this deck, which means it should be the next rock song to be scheduled. It's been tested 12 times already and has been rejected 12 times. So I'm sure it's time must be coming soon. The average test shows us how, how many times those items are tested and rejected on average. Now that number looks very high and in a small category like this, it probably will have a lot of um, a high average test because uh, there's only a very small amount of, of songs or items inside this category. So the rules will be applying quite um, aggressively within this category. A couple of other options we have here. If you click on the cog, you can um, see the options. So we've got a couple of things here. Uh, you can, first thing is you can shuffle the contents of this deck. And if I choose that, it will go through and it'll uh, change the order of the deck. As you can see, it's changed, changed the order. Now, all of the artist and title restrictions will still apply. So it, um, it won't schedule a song that's just um, been scheduled recently and to do so we break the rules. But what this does mean is that the order of the deck can be um, can be changed. And this is particularly useful in small categories like an A-list where um, if you only got uh, a, a small amount of songs and very light rules applied, uh, the rotation pattern may become quite obvious to listeners. So you can apply a uh, shuffle manually. And if you have schedule plus, you can configure automatic shuffles and kicks. This allows you to say uh, for either shuffles or kicks um, when to do them automatically. Now, let me just explain uh, the difference between a sh shuffle and a kick. A shuffle will randomize the order in the deck. So in this particular um, category at 2 a.m. every day of the week, the deck will be shuffled. A kick on the other hand is a rotation of items in the deck as if they've been scheduled, but without them actually being scheduled. So we can see at the moment in this category, the Imagination Dragons is currently the top of this uh, category. But if this was at um, three, uh, sort of midnight on a Monday, there's a kick, automatic kick applied of three, which means that uh, it's time Charlemagne and where will you go? The top three items in the deck will go to the bottom of the deck as if they've been scheduled, rotating the entire deck by three items. And again, this is very useful for maintaining small categories with a small amount of rules applied to them, such as an A-list or a um, another small category with, that's prominently featured on your station. You can also squash the decks. This just performs a maintenance task, um, which can speed up scheduling if you're having problems. Uh, it's unlikely you will need to do that because um, a lot of the maintenance is managed automatically. Finally, you can trigger a, a, 
a, a check of the system which basically triggers um, the system at the um, at the station end or on your cloud.radio system to do an integrity check on the database and fix any errors that it finds. The final option on this row of buttons is open another deck view. Click on that and it opens up another one and you can keep going and open up two or three of these if you want to. Now the reason you may want to do this is you can set these to different categories and then you can drag and drop between them. So if I wanted to move um, Kings of Leon into my R&B category for some reason, I can pick it up and I can just drop it in there and now you can see it's been added to our R&B category. And if I double click on it, we'll be able to see in the category section, you can see that its primary category is now set to R&B as opposed to rock, which it would have been if we'd looked a few minutes ago. Category decks provide a very easy way of viewing content within categories and also moving things between categories. And it's particularly useful if you run like an A-list and a B-list because you can see what's in the A-list, you can see what's in your B-list and you can drag things between them as required. Before we move on to creating our first simple or advanced clock, let's have a quick review of how Myriad schedule, schedules content for your station. To start with, we have our content library, which consists of song categories, link categories, and advert categories. Then we have a series of clocks, either advanced or simple clocks, and each clock is a framework or a plan for a one hour show. Those clocks are then assigned to hours of the week and the same clock can be assigned to multiple hours of the week. So you may have a clock called automation that is actually scheduled to every hour from midnight through till 6 a.m. Finally, we have some rules called rule set, which are applied at scheduled time. So when Myriad Schedule is called to schedule an hour, the first thing it does is looks at the clock that is assigned to that hour. So in the example here, the first thing in the hour is an advert break from the first break category. So Myriad Schedule will go to the advert category into the first break category and schedule a advert from that category. The next thing it needs to do is a link. So it will go to the link category and schedule the top uh, item in the link category deck that's associated with station IDs. Then it's going to do a pop song. So we'll open up the pop category deck and look at the top item in there. Now, when it schedules songs and links, it also looks at the rule sets. So it may get to the top item or the first item in the song category deck, and it will then check to see what rules it needs to apply. And in this example, it says, don't repeat the song within 10 hours. Don't repeat the artist within three hours. So as long as the top song in the pop category won't break either of those rules, then that is scheduled in the first pop or in the first song slot into that clock. Then it moves on to the next item in the clock, which is a rock category song, goes to the rock category deck and does the same thing next is an advert then a link then another pop song and that's how it constructs the hours so once it's done the first hour in the run it'll then move on to hour two then hour three until it's completed the entire scheduling process So far, we've concentrated on how to add and manage content on your system. However, a key element to scheduling is actually telling the system what it needs to schedule for any hour of the week. This is achieved by a thing called clocks, which are basically frameworks or plans for a show for the given hour. Now, there are two types of clocks available within Myriad Schedule. There are simple clocks and advanced clocks. Simple clocks are most useful for automation hours or hours where you don't need specific structure. In a simple clock, you simply say which balance of music you want and how often to play a jingle. By contrast, in an advanced clock, you specify exactly what log items should be scheduled for each position within the clock and can set what category type, gender, era and tags should be used. We also maintain the ability to have a mix of music. So not every item in the clock has to be specified. We can set some overall goals that the system will use to fill in the blanks on the clock. Let's build a simple clock. In order to build and manage clocks, you need to click on edit clocks under the clocks and rules section. This opens the clocks window which is where you can see a list of all the clocks you have on your system. 
You can add new clocks by clicking on the option at the top here. You can also copy existing clocks or edit ex existing clocks. On the right hand side, we also see the clock assignment grid, which is where you assign clocks to every hour of the week. But we'll come to that in a few moments. Let's create a, a new simple clock. Click on the add new clock button and it opens a new clock window. By default, clocks always start as simple. So let's give it a name. And we're going to leave this clock type as simple because um, we're doing a simple clock. Next, we have to choose which playout mode to use it for. Either auto fade if it's going to be an automated hour or live assist if a presenter is going to do the show. Uh, let's do an auto fade one, which is an automated, uh, automated hour for this simple clock. Next, you can choose which rule sets to use. Now, we're going to come on to rule sets in a short while. However, all you need to know at this stage is uh, you can either use the station default rules or you can choose a specific rule set if you've created additional rule sets. We're going to stick with the station rules for now. Now, when, when you create a simple clock, if you are using the station rules, then to find within the station rules is a balance of music, which is depicted by this pie chart here. So as we can see, this balance of music is mostly pop, but with some dance, some gold, some rock, and some R&B. And they're the only categories that we are allowing in here. And then when Myriad, when Myriad Schedule schedules using this clock, over half of the content it picks, maybe about 60% of the content it picks will come from the pop category. And then a small amount will come from gold and dance with an even smaller amount from rock and R&B. So in this particular scenario, while we're using the station uh, rules, this is the mix of music that this simple clock will produce. However, if we want to, we can override the station rules for this specific clock. So if I tick, if I turn this option here, the override the category goals and enable changes to key category rule setting, then the pie chart is replaced with instead a, a slider for every single um, category in our list here. And what you can do is you can basically adjust these to get the mix of music that you want on your station. So let's say we want lots of pop and some gold, and then we're going to have nothing else on any of these. So I'm going to turn these all off. And then this simple clock will only play gold and pop, and it will ma mainly play gold, oh, sorry, it will mainly play pop, but with say 25% gold, just like this. We can also adjust the rules in here so we can override the station rule set. So if we wanted to, to have a song that had just um, a, a, a larger or a smaller separation between title and artist per category, then we can do so. And then these are done per category. So you can see I've, um, I can edit the specific override rules for pop when using this clock. We can also do the same thing for links because um, we need to tell it which categories of links to pick from. Um, so I'm going to turn off everything but wet sweepers. So the only category we're picking from now are the sweepers. Okay, so you can see now we've set our link and song category goals. Next on here, we can set a item to play at the beginning and the end of, the, um, of this uh, simple clock. So by clicking the item, we can then type in the media ID we want to play. So let's say we had a jingle at media ID five. That was the one we wanted to start the hour with. And then we had another one at media ID number six, which is the one we want to finish the hour on. The next setting allows you to set how often a link should be played. So here we've got automatically choose a link every two items. So I'm going to change this to three items. So we'll play three songs, then a link then three more songs. And it will use these category goals we set earlier to determine which categories should be played there. As an alternative to starting the item with a specific, starting the, the hour with a specific media ID, you can also choose to start the hour with an auto hook instead. And an auto hook item is a special item where it will look 
forward in the hour and extract the hooks that have been set from X many songs and combine them with jingles that you've specified to create a live promo for what's coming up on the show or on in that hour. If we click on edit, you can change the settings for your auto hook. The first three allow you to choose the media items that should be around your songs. So the first one is a jingle to play or a, a piece of audio to play at the beginning of your auto hook. So let's say you have a jingle that says coming up in the next hour. That's what you would put in there. The separator media is um, a piece of audio that will be played between the hooks from each song. So often this will be a burst of static or some other production element to mask any jagged segues between them. Finally, a piece of media to play at the end of the item. So that might be another jingle. Next, you can say how many hooks to play. So this is how many songs should be, how many hooks, uh, songs from hooks should be included in this auto hook. And also how many hours to look forward to. So if we want to contain this within the one hour, we can change that. The item selection drop down allows you to choose how the hooks will actually be played, whether they should be the next X items, random X items, or the next X items, but played in reverse order. So the one that is played last on the auto hook will be the song that's played closest to the auto hook. Finally, you can choose a media item that will be played if no songs can be found that have hooks set within the frame that you've set this auto hook for. So if you set this to play in an hour and there are no songs in that hour that have auto hooks, then media, the media ID you type into this field will be the media ID gets, that gets played instead of the auto hook. The final setting on a simple clock is exactly how long the schedule, the, the clock should be. Normally this is just one hour. However, you can change that duration if you need to. If you're happy with your simple clock, hit OK and it's added to the list. To edit an existing clock, select it and then click on the edit button on the ribbon or simply double click on it. You can also duplicate a clock to use it as a template for a new clock. Select the clock you want to duplicate and click on the copy button. The new clock is opened with a new name, copy of original name. Make your edits and click on OK. Now that we've seen how to build a simple clock, let's move on to building an advanced clock. Click on the add clock button and this will open up another blank clock and it starts life as a simple clock as the previous one did. So first of all, let's give it a title. The next thing we want to do is click on the advanced clock button. Now this will give you the option to pre-populate the clock based on the settings you have here. So in this particular case, it's going to do an hour's worth of music with a link every two items. But I'm going to say no, because I'd rather build this clock from scratch. But certainly you, if you say yes, that will certainly speed things along when building a fairly simple clock. We have a new tab now called the clock items tab. And as you can see, there's nothing in it at the moment, but this is where we build the structure for our clock. On the left hand side, we have all the possible clock items that we can add. So running through them quickly, we've got a song, which is obviously a song and a link, which is a jingle, advert breaks, which are pretty straightforward. News media items are any items on your media wall tags as news and media items are any number or any media ID on your uh, media wall. You can add auto hooks just like you could in simple clocks, but you can also add hardware events either um, so you can turn external hardware on. You can add social media posts. We have three types of timing events inside of, um, of Mirror and Schedule. I'll come to these in a, in a minute, but uh, essentially absolute times are um, an exact time. A soft time gets to within one song of an absolute time and a reset time is used for speech shows. You can also add scripts directly into your log, which are displayed in the log. And if you're running split player, you can have split groups, which are split jingles and split adverts. 
And finally, you can actually put a clock inside another clock, which sounds crazy, but the reason you have that is um, a clock is just a sequence of, of clock items. It doesn't have to be a full hour. So you could have a clock, which is just the first four or five items in your hour, your top of hour sequence. And then you could put that clock in the beginning of a load of other clocks. And that way, if you need to change your um, begin top of hour sequence, you need only edit that one clock rather than all of the clocks that are using that particular sequence. So let's get started with building a simple clock. Let's start off with a link. I'm going to drag that one in here. As you can see, it's added the link in and I can set the category for this link by dropping down and I'm going to choose wet sweeper. If we have um, anywhere, if we have schedule plus, we can also set the type genders and eras and also must not have tags. Um, if you just have Myriad Schedule standard, you do get tags, so you can choose your tags. And um, Schedule Plus users also now have access to start and end year as well as hardware events. Finally, you can choose whether this item is droppable, fadeable or locked. And in the case of live shows, you can also choose the chain type, whether it's a green for to automatically segue onto the next item or a red item, which will stop and let the user talk and then move on to the next item. So let's add in a few more things into here. We've got a, a another song and another song. And as you can see, I've actually left um, this these two as use goals. And in that case, it'll actually use the song category goals, which is just exactly the same as we saw in a simple clock. So it's either coming from the station rule set or you could override it on this particular clock if you wish to. Let's say we want to play a specific media item. We can pop that in, choose the media item we want to play. And media item number 10 will be played as the fourth item inside this clock. Carry on uh, building out your clock accordingly. You can put social media posts in. Each of these items, when you click on them, there is the, the settings for them. Um, so you can explore them um, and see what the settings are for each particular item. There you go. So that's our, our social post put in. Now I mentioned about absolute times. Let me just explain what the absolute times are for. So absolute times are exact events or soft, soft times can be um, to within one song. So what will happen here is if I set this absolute time to be uh, 13 minutes past the hour, So what this is telling Myriad Playout to do is say, well, this absolute time has to happen at exactly 13 minutes past the hour. And because this is an auto fade song, uh, hour or a clock, um, then any hours that are scheduled using this clock will know that they have to back time all the content that comes before this absolute time to happen ex to finish at exactly 13 minutes past the hour. So these songs and links that we've got in here beforehand will either be faded early or time stretched or maybe even dropped altogether in order to um, get to that absolute time marker. Now let's add in another absolute time. On this one, I'm gonna set the reference to be uh, 15 minutes past the hour. And because uh, there is nothing in between, the system will wait for two minutes from 13 minutes past to 15 minutes past. So that's another use for absolute times. By contrast, a soft time allows you to put in your time. And also a time you're allowed to be early by. So let's say uh, one, one minute. And what that does is it's like an absolute time, but it allows the system to be early by up to a minute or overrun by the duration of the currently playing item. It's a little complex to explain and it's, um, it's covered in more detail in the Myriad documentation, but essentially this allows you to get to within one song of an absolute time. So rather than um, an absolute time which will um, fade stuff or remove stuff to get to an exact time point in time, a soft time will get you to within one log item of that time. So if it isn't time critical to the second, a soft time is often going to give you a nicer sound on it. 
Finally, a reset time um, is used for talk shows and other things, other shows where you have sections of the hour that are, are not audio based and it allows you to reset the time after up to that point. So if you talk for 20 minutes at the beginning of your show, you should put a reset time in for 21 minutes bar so that everything beyond the reset time takes into account the 20 minutes of talking or external show that you had in there. Okay, you can add a script and you can type your script in or you can load it from a file if you prefer. Uh, you can also add split events if you have a split playout. And finally, as I mentioned before, you can put a clock in if you have a, a clock, which is a short sequence that you want to include within this clock. Let's take a look at a clock I was working on earlier. Here we can see we've the basic structure for our clock is in place with all of the different elements that we want to have within our clock. You can also see I've started to fill in the category type genders, errors and other attributes that I want for them. Um, you can put in as much or as little as you want under here. So you can see this first link is going to be a station ID. The second, the first song in the hour is going to be from the B list and it's going to be from the big hits type. But I haven't filled out any of the other um, attributes for that particular item. But three or four songs down, I've got a song from the pop category. Um, and it has to be big hits type, gender female era from the 80s. And it also has to be tagged as romantic. And in fact, I've even gone a little bit further and said it has to be from the year 1986 to 1989. You can actually set this um, this year. You can either type in the, the, the exact dates or you can say any or ask. Any, obviously, um, any year is fine. If you choose ask, however, at um, schedule time, it actually asks you which year you want to use for that item. As you can see, we've got our ever breaks with our references in. We've got an auto hook. We've got a hardware event. We've got a social post. Um, another ever break. So pretty much this clock is ready to go. And we can just hit, our, hit OK. And it will uh, save the changes we've made to that clock. Once you have all the clocks you need, it's time to assign them to hours in the week to complete your schedule. To do that, click on Edit Clock to open the Clocks window. And the right-hand section of this window is the Clock Assignment Grid. Now, we can see on this example here, we're using one clock over and over and over for every hour of the week. And that's just fine if the same, if you don't mind the same structure and the same um the same mix of content in every single hour and there may be legitimate reasons why you want to do that however it's likely that you'll have different clocks for different sections of the day so let's take a look at how we might build one from scratch i'm going to just click on clear all to remove all these and you can see i've got nothing in here then so let's say we wanted to start off and we could say okay let's take our simple clock and we're going to put that in uh nine at uh, midnight on a monday and then we could do the same thing for one o'clock. However, it would take us forever to do it like that. So what you can actually do is um, you can use the mouse to select a whole bunch of, of times. And then you choose the clock you want uh, to use. And then you click on set to um, selected clock. And then we'll set them all in there. So let's just go through and do that for uh, till 7 a.m. And we're going to do the same thing from 10 o'clock in the evening through. And so now uh, we're using our simple clock for the night. Um, but in, during our daytime, we want to have a um, different clock. Let's say we're going to have uh, pop gold in there. Uh, but the, the weekends, we're going to do something different. We're going to do the rock hour on the weekends. And you carry on building out your schedule like this. You can see that you can basically choose the clocks that you have and um and uh, then put them in there uh you can also uh you can also um double click on them to open the clocks if you need to edit them and you can remove individual ones by highlighting it and saying remove current assignments once you've got everything set up you can also um, import and export from here and i'd re we'd recommend um, exporting your uh, clock assignments so that you can um, you can use them uh, load them back up again later if you wish to 
when you've finished with your clock assignments, just click on OK uh, to save your results. With your content loaded, your clocks built and assigned, then the final piece of the puzzle is the station rules. These allow you to set on a per category basis the criteria by which Myriad Schedule will use to either allow a song to be scheduled or to block it from being scheduled. So let's take a look at the rules available and how you apply them. To access station rules, go to the clock and rules section and click on station rules. This provides a list of all existing station rules and you can also see that there is a ticked one which is the current default rules. You may remember from the clocks that by default all the clocks will use the default station rule set. Um, you can change the default by simply ticking a different one. You can add a new station rule set by clicking on the new rules button on the ribbon or if you highlight a, an existing rules you can either copy it, delete it or edit it. Let's take a look at the default rules. Here we have the default rules. As you can see, uh, we have this, the, uh, the name for the uh, station rule set here. And uh, we have on the left hand side, we have all of the different rules available. So we have, um, it's divided up into different areas. So we've got the song category rules, um, song type rules, song gender rules, song error rules, song tags. As with other areas in the system, if you don't have Myriad Schedule Plus, you won't see types, genders, or errors. Then we have the link rules, link type, gender, and error rules, and link tag rules. And then finally, we have tag goals, which allow you to say a maximum in a row um, for certain tags. So let's go through these in a little bit more detail. And first of all, start with song category goals. Now, you may recall on the in the um, simple clock and the advanced clock we have the option to either jet set the mix of music on the clock itself or use the mix from the assigned um, station rule set so if you've got that clock set to use the station rule set this is where the mix of music is um, is actually sorted so you can see here uh, on on this default station rules we've got mostly pop with a bit of gold and a bit of dance a bit of rock and a bit of R&B so let's say we wanted to increase the amount of dance music we just simply drag the slider along and we can see that, that we've got um, more dance music now than we did have uh, uh, certainly we'll have more uh, dance music than pop music rock or R&B um, this column here tells us how many songs are in each of those categories so we can see we've only got 12 R&B songs so there would be little point trying to um, put R&B all the way to the top because it just simply won't have enough R&B songs to be able to schedule and you end up with lots of unscheduled content um, over to the right for any enabled category we have minimum max and separation now if you are a schedule uh, standard customer you'll have min and max if you are a schedule plus customer you also have the separation or the sep column enabled and what this does is uh, it simply allows a minimum and a maximum in a row it's really important to remember that's not overall for the hour it's just in a row um, for this particular category so if i set this to be um, four then what that means is if Myriad schedule schedules a pop song, um, or three pop songs in a row, or sorry, four pop songs in a row, the fifth category song will have to come from something else because it won't allow more than four in a row. However, as soon as we play a different type of song that resets that count. The separation is how many songs or how many items from different categories have to be played before you can return to this one. So an alternative way of doing this would be, I could set that back to 15, but set a separation of uh, one. And that would effectively mean that it has to play another category before it could come back and play a pop category. That probably wouldn't work in this particular case. But what we could do is on a category we've got less content, we could say, okay, well, you've got to play two other categories before you can come back to here. So even though uh, rock is accounting for uh, a fairly small amount of music in the mix of music for this um, when this uh, show uh, station rule is being applied it will still have to play if it schedules a rock song it will have to play song uh, songs from two other categories before it can come back and this will prevent 
um, rock songs from clustering together at any point in your um, in any hours where this uh, this uh, station rule is being applied. As you can see, you can go through and you can set them for every single uh, category uh, that is on your system. Now let's move on to the category rules. Now these uh, you set these on a per category basis. So I'm just going to go into the pop one show you, but you would set them individually for each category of, of content that you're using. So let's run through the settings we have here. At the top, we have the um, search depth. Now what this means is if it's looking for a song in a particular category, how much of that category can it consider before it gives up and says, uh, no, actually, I'm not going to find something from that category. Currently, that's set to 50% for pop, which means out of the 281 songs that are in the pop category, it can look, examine a maximum of 140 of those before it says, uh, okay, well, this nothing has fit the bill so far, so this is an unscheduled item. You should set this to 100% for, for small categories and for larger categories, you can um, reduce it down. It will speed up scheduling if you don't have that set to 100% on everything, particularly in bigger categories. Then we have the actual rules here and we can see we've only got two rules currently being applied um, for the pop category. We've got a song title separation and artist title separation. So let's take a look at the details for these two rules. So we're setting on our song title separation, we're having a um, separation of one hour. Um, that means that uh, once this song has been played, it can't be played again for a minimum of one hour. And we've also got this set to be never allow this rule to be broken, so it can't be broken. So if there are no other songs to play, it would leave an unscheduled item rather than play this one within one hour of the time it played previously. Similarly, let's look at the artist separation. Very similar rule, just applied to artist instead of title. And you can see in this particular setup, we've only got a 30 minute minimum separation between songs by the same artist, but that is unbreakable. Let's try adding a different rule in. Click on the plus to add in a new rule and you can choose which rule you want to, to add in. So let's quickly buzz through. And we've already looked at song title separation and artist separation. Title yesterday, tomorrow separation. That means if this, shed, if this song title schedules today at midday, protect it from playing around midday yesterday and tomorrow, that will stop um, people who listen at lunchtime every day from um, from being able to or hearing that same song, even though the, the, the rotation would mean that the artist and the song hasn't been played for maybe 24 hours, it, you can stop it from using uh, being played around a similar time um, on consecutive days. Uh, that is only available to Schedule Plus users. Um, and again, you can set it to be either uh, never allow it to be broken, or you can actually do what we call a breakable rule, which is where we, we set that in. So we set that in, say, maybe um, 0, 2, 0, 0, 0, 0, So it's set to two hours, and I'm going to allow it to be broken. So when I click on OK, you can see yesterday, tomorrow separation has been added, but it is breakable. So the system will try and enforce this rule, but if it has to, it will break that rule. Um, so you've got the same uh, variation for artist uh, that allows you to, to apply this to an artist instead of a uh, title. Uh, then you've got minimum maximum in a row uh, and sep in a row. This is this refers to the minimum maximum separation we were talking about a few seconds ago, but this is for types. Similarly, type follow rules. Um, we'll come on to them in a second, but you can choose whether to apply them um, for this particular category. And then the same thing for genders and same thing for errors. And then finally, whether to apply the song tag max min in a row as well. The order of the rules is also important because if you have multiple um, breakable rules, then you want to have your the rule that you um, care about least at the bottom because the way it works with breakable rules is it schedules tries to schedule a slot. If a slot is unscheduled, then it will remove the bottom most breakable rule and then try again. Then move the next most breakable rule and try again. And only when it gets to an unbreakable rule um, and it still hasn't scheduled that point, that's where it says it couldn't schedule anything in that slot and that's where you get an unscheduled item. Uh, finally, on the bottom of this screen is the, um, the the follow rules. So here we can see we're on pop at the moment, and these are the categories we're allowing to follow pop. So currently, we are not allowing classical 
or filler music to follow pop. As you can see, moving to different categories, they'll have different types of rules set. Um, so you could, should set them accordingly uh, for how you want your station to run. If you have Schedule Plus, then you can go into the uh, Type Goal Rules. This again allows you to do uh, mi minimum, max in a row separation. Same description as with uh, categories, but this is applying to the type. So it allows you to control how, um, whether or not you have runs or, or how many types in a row and also what type separation. And then similarly to the songs, you also have the uh, Follow Rules. So you can say for each type, which other types are allowed to follow it. So if you've got Window Wonderlands, you may not want Rock for the Ages to follow it for some reason. Uh, then we have exactly the same set of rules for genders. Uh, we won't go through them again. And the same thing for eras. And then finally, we've got our song tags. Um, we can say um, for song tags, we can set a maximum in uh, maximum for each one of those. So we can say how many uh, in a row are we allowing of one particular uh, cat, uh, tag so if you had a tag of um, I don't know uh, monster hits you may not want to play more than two of them on, in a row you can also choose which tags are actually available to be used whenever this station rule set is in play if you untick any of these then these tags will not be available to Mirage schedule while this station rule set is in use as you can see we have the similar similar set of rules for um, for links you're probably going to have less rules applied to links, um, but the same options are there for you. So you can add in and edit them as required. And that's it for station rules. Uh, once you're happy, you hit OK and um, then those rules are saved. And don't forget that by um, by doing this, if you make changes to the uh, station rules, particularly the default station rules, all of the clocks that um, uh, any of the clocks that uh, are using that station rule will have those changes applied to them the next time you schedule. With content clocks and rules all sorted, let's take a look at how you use Myriad Anywhere Schedule to actually schedule content onto your system. Remember, you may not have to do this because Myriad Playout can be configured to automatically maintain a rolling schedule ahead. But if you need to manually schedule, then this is how you do it. Before we start on actually scheduling the content, it would be useful to know what hours have already been scheduled. And you can do that using the Log Hour Information option in the Schedule Log section. Choose the start and end date that you wish to view. Click on update. And here you can see a report of hours that have been scheduled by the system. So if it's a green box, it means the hour has been scheduled. If there's a number in the box other than zero, it means that one or more unscheduled items is still listed in that hour. So you can see on the 3rd of July uh, at uh, midnight to one o'clock, there were two unscheduled items. If you see any hours that are half green and half orange like this, it means that the music and the links have been scheduled, but the adverts currently haven't been scheduled into the uh, into the log. So these uh, hours here with uh, green and orange uh, still need to have the advert scheduled. And then finally, the hours that are in grey are hours that haven't been scheduled yet. So we can see from this uh, from this graphic that uh, we need to schedule the 14th of July. Now that we know we want to schedule the 14th of July, let's go ahead and do that by clicking on the schedule log option under scheduled log. This opens up the scheduled log dialog, which allows you to select the, um, the steps that you want to do, as well as the date range. Um, you can use the date selection to choose a fixed date, or you can set the, um, the date manually using the from and to fields. And you can see here that it's already populated it to the 14th of July, although um, my settings seem to be set into an American date format at the moment, which is why that's backwards. Um, so the system automatically knows when the next day that needs scheduling is. Um, 
in terms of the uh, the steps involved, you can see here are all the different steps involved in the scheduling. So you can um, you can actually exclude these. So let's say you wanted to do to schedule everything but the B list, you could actually untick the B list and then it wouldn't schedule the B list. The other thing you can do if you have Myriad Schedule Plus is you can actually change the order of things. So you can see I could take pop and I could move it up the order here. Now the reason that's important is um, this. That means that the pop category will be scheduled first and that means the rules that are applied are less likely to affect songs in the pop category. So Schedule Plus customers can alter the um, Schedule Pass order, this is called, to allow you to prioritise some categories over other categories. Typically, if you had something like an A-list or a B-list, a small category which is your prime content you want to play, that would be in the top of this list. You can also see you can exclude um, the jingles or the links as well, and also the adverts as well. Um, you can opt over to run the schedule log reports and also to show the log at the end if you wish. Once you're happy with the settings, click on the schedule button. Okay, once that process is complete, that day has been scheduled. Um, that process could take several minutes depending on how complex your rules are, how many uh, songs, links and adverts you have. Um, so we've sped up the video just going through that process. Um, but uh, one thing that you uh, should be aware of is you are able to close the browser while it's scheduling. The system doesn't rely on the browser being open to complete that scheduling task. As soon as you click on, on schedule, it instructs Myriad um, Playout in the studio to, to perform that scheduled task and you are free to close the browser at that point. You don't have to leave the browser open in order for the task to finish. Next, let's see how we could unschedule that day if we wanted to remove that day from the log. To unschedule a log, click on the unschedule logs option on the scheduled logs section. Here you can see a very similar dialog. Select the date time range that you want to unschedule. Okay, so we have uh, the 14th from uh, 12 a.m. to 11.59 p.m. And all we have to do is click on the unschedule button to remove that content from the log. And that's the process done. You can also view and edit the log from within Myriad Anywhere Schedule using the view log option under schedule log. This opens up the log view, which you will be familiar with from um, Myriad Anywhere um, for voice tracking or live use, or indeed if you've used Myriad in the studio. From here you have all of the tools that you have uh, available in elsewhere in Myriad Anywhere, including the ability to, to move items around in the log, to replace items by right clicking and replacing and then choosing an appropriate replacement item. You can add new content from the log um, by inserting choosing the type of content you want to insert and then selecting the item that you want to insert. And you can see you can insert other non-audio items as well, such as absolute times, auto hooks, commands, social posts, etc. You can navigate to a specific date or time using the go to button. You can even edit the segues and record voice links if you want to. Another feature that allows you to review the log is the Schedule Log Warnings Report. Select the Schedule Log Warning Report from the Schedule Log section. Choose your date time range and hit OK. This report shows a breakdown by hour for any hours that have something wrong with them. So as you can see, some of these have unscheduled songs, unscheduled links or are under running. This allows you to review any period that has been scheduled to make sure there aren't any issues that you need to manually deal with. If you need to view a list of what's been played on your station, you can use the play logs to access that information. Click on the play logs option under play logs to open the play logs window. Next, select the date time range that you're interested in. You can use the date selection to choose something a preset time like yesterday, or you can use the from and to dates to pick an exact date and time. 
there are a few other options. You can choose whether to only have on-air content, so that will actually follow on-air control. You can include previews if you wish, and you can use some more filters, uh, by, so you can filter by station, location, media type, or a range of media. When you're happy with your selection criteria, click on search. Here you can see all of the songs that were played yesterday, yesterday on Hot FM. Sometimes you have to provide a report for your copyright body. You can do that by clicking on the copyright report button. Next, choose the copyright report you're interested in. As you can see, we have a, a number of predetermined copyright um, body reports. Let's say we want a UK PPL return. Click on search. And here you can see the information is listed and the columns are in the correct order that PPL um, require for automatic submission. To export this to send to the copyright body, click on export CSV and your report will be uploaded to your standard downloads folder um, on your browser. If you need to change any options, change station, or even log out from Myriad Anywhere, click on the Myriad Anywhere logo to access the drop down menu. Here you can access the options, which provide a range of options about your entire Myriad Anywhere experience. These settings apply to all different types of Myriad Anywhere modules, so they aren't exclusively for Myriad Anywhere schedule. You can also view the about information, switch to full screen or view the version history information. To change station, click on the change station button. This allows you to choose the stations that you have set up on your system. You can also jump back to the launch pad. This will allow you to go back to the launch pad to choose a different module to work with. Finally, you can change your password or log out from Myriad anyway. We hope you found this tutorial video useful. For more information, visit helped.broadcastradio.com for more videos and tutorials. Thanks for watching.